to show you what happens when I come into the studio with an idea to paint. First thing I'm going to do is prep the board. And that's what that's for. Here's my graduate acrylic burnt sienna. And I'm going to prep this board. Putting on an underpainting. Oh, that was nice, that satsuma. That was really nice. Bit of fruit. Should do this often. Right. It's acrylic paint. So, it's got a bit of flex and bounce to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint water on the other side. Now, I'm wetting it because when this dries, it will dry taut and it will be less elastic. Oops, what were you doing, Mallet? Right, so it's just water, a brush, hot or cold, doesn't really matter. You paint the back of the canvas. Of course, this doesn't work if it's an actual board, it only works if it's a canvas. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Right, I'm putting water on here because when I put the paint on, it'll just, I won't need quite as much. You probably can't see from there, but I can see from here, and that is that the water isn't um, so, it sits on top of the primed canvas. So you've got to put a little bit of scrubbing motion into it. But now it's sopping wet. Okay. And I'm going to get a bit of burnt sienna. This may look orange to you. But it's a, what's called burnt sienna, which is a nice brown. Look at that. Wow, that looks nice, doesn't it? Ooh, yeah. This is always a fun part of the painting experience. Prepping the board, getting it ready. And the reason I do the underpainting is it's somehow easier when we come to do the actual painting to make a difference between the light and shade. Painting is all, painting images all about light and shade making a difference in the light and shade of what you see to let your eyes build up the image and this is how I start the painting session I don't need very much paint on the underpainting session. It's only to get rid of the white. That's all it's for. And as you can see, it's nicely dribbling. I can see that the, the light uh, uh, up here makes it look like there isn't any paint on there. There is. That's just the reflection of the light, can you see? Oh, right, okay. So that is now painted and, if you like, prepared. So I'm going to put this outside in the sunshine and in about 20 minutes, half an hour, that will be dry. Acrylic paints. They're really good. They're good for that. They're for preparing the canvas and getting it ready. This is another canvas that I've prepared 
uh, around about half past one this afternoon. See, quite dry, nicely taut. Right, put that over there. Wash your brushes, Mallet. Okay, okay, you sounded like my mum. Right. I've got my brushes over here that I used yesterday and I painted with yesterday. Cleaned them up and dried nicely. So, what am I going to do? Let's have a little think, shall we? So today is the 25th of March. Beautiful sunny day. Happy 25th of March. Uh, interesting little factlets that come up about uh, anniversaries. Apparently this is the date of the very first Easter Sunday in AD 31. The very first Easter Sunday. Wow. Okay. I don't know how they worked that out, but they did. Uh, it's also the anniversary of the abolition of the slave trade, day when Richard the Lionheart was shot with a bow and arrow, a crossbow. Um, and it's also another anniversary today. What's the other anniversary I was going to tell you about? Oh yeah, it's a few birthdays today, isn't it? Um, Elton John and uh, somebody else, I think Nancy Sinatra. Hey, so there you go. Happy birthday to those folks. <laughs> Why have you got that as your notification sound when you get a message? Oh, I'm like you. I'm just the same as everybody else. I've got to have a little look. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Right, and I put that down there. So, on uh, Sunday, I went out on my bike for some exercise, socially distancing myself from people, and I cycled across the Chiltern Hills to Brill Windmill. It's on a little outcrop of the Chilterns in central Buckinghamshire. Uh, and it's an absolutely glorious spot. It's one of the high points uh, all on its own in um, that part of the, the world. And the, you, you stand up on the top of it and you can look right across to the Cotswolds uh, and the other way uh, over into the home counties, northwards right up into Northamptonshire. It gives you views right across central southern England and it's just magnificent. I've been going up there for quite some time actually. I remember one of the first times I went to visit was with my dad and we went up to Brill Windmill and I took this photo in 1994. It was a summer's day, it would be June 1994. Now the difference between this day and Sunday is the sky. See this, it's a summer's day, but it's a muted sky. On Sunday, it was uh, a, a spring sky, and spring skies uh, are like autumn skies. They have a lot of colour because the sun is lower in the, in the, uh, in the sky, so you get a richer blue. I'll show you the photo on my phone that uh, I'm going to use. Uh, yeah, that'll be it. That, that's the one. Let's get this up. So, that's the photo on the phone. Now, you see the richness of that blue. Compare that, a spring day, to a summer's day in June. Wow. So don't automatically think that just because it's a summer's day that the colours are going to be better. They aren't necessarily. I often find this, that spring 
uh, autumn and even winter skies can be more dramatic than a summer sky. Something to bear in mind, lower sun, just crossing the equinox, uh, uh, that is the equator. Um, so the sun crosses the equator on the spring and the autumn equinox and uh, then you get either longer days as of Sunday when of the clocks change and we'll have quite a, a dramatic uh, longer day. But will there be as much colour? Right, on that note, this is what I did on Sunday. I took my watercolours with me and it's a little watercolour pad and that's what I painted. In watercolors in, in about 10 minutes uh, okay that was to give me the inspiration thinking yeah okay but it was bitterly cold there was a cold wind it's like yikes we're going to get more of that this weekend apparently quite a uh, a startling breeze breeze it'll be ruddy freezing so enjoy today now then where are my colors I've got my palette here I'll show you the palette. That's the palette. It's a big palette, isn't it? You'll see those lumps of colour there. This is um, paint that's built up over quite some time. I've got it uh, in a nice curve like this. The idea is I can I can hold the palette like this. Except I don't. <laughs> I don't because it's getting a bit heavy. And I like to have my hands free. Um, and so I'm, I just have it in front on a little table here. So I'm going to use this. I'll show you that image again. Where have I put it? There it. Where is it? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Hang on. That's it. So that's the image I want to use and I've got it on a screen just to the side of me here um, and you can see that a wide landscape and this is a much uh, more condensed image, uh, well, condensed canvas, it's uh, what's that? about 20 by 30 isn't it, in inches. Sometimes we work metric, sometimes we work imperial. But what I, a reason I've chosen this is I'm going to condense the image. I'm going to bring the windmill central and uh, I'm going to, what I'm going to do this afternoon is block in where I'd like things to be. So what I'll do first of all is get a little bit of colour. I'm going to use quite a, a, a simple bit of colour here and block in some bits where I think things are going to go. So I'm going to guess that the sky is going to be at the top because it usually is. And just for those who care about these things and not everybody does. The sky is always darker at the top than it is at the bottom. I know what you're doing now. Right now I said that, you're looking out of the window. Go on, look out the window now, tell me. Is it darker up there or down near the horizon? Have a look. Come back and tell me. Oh, there's the blue. That's it. I really like this blue. This is a, a Classico made by Mamieri, which is an Italian um, oil colour. This is called Sky Blue, Bleu Ciel. Um, now, if it looks like I'm painting with my left hand, I'm sorry about that. I'm actually painting with my right hand, but I don't know quite how to set this up so that I get the big wide screen on the selfie image I can see your comments down here um, 
Jeanette, you're right, but my husband's bottom is in the way doing the garden. Okay, lovely. How delightful to know where your husband's bottom is. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so, so if there's a way to set this up so that when I'm doing the mirror image, this is odd because yesterday, you know, you, you do a little practice, set the camera up, hit go, oh, looks like I'm back to front. Stop it, play it back, and on the replay when it played back, I'm the right way round. But now as Facebook Live shows, Oh, back to front all over the place. I don't know. I don't know what to say. In this drawer over here, I've got some rags. So, clearly somebody in this house has had a rather disgusting coloured pink outfit of one sort or another and I've chopped it up and said, right, that's going to be rags for my oil paint so I will wipe my brush on there and uh, we'll see how we get on right a bit of uh, where's the green gonna go where's the landscape going to be uh, I think around about here you'll notice that I'm not drawing anything in I don't get out a pencil and say sketch, sketch, sketch. I just paint it where I think things are going to go. And I do that because I've looked at the basics of this image. Let's look at it again. Okay. A little hard to see there. I might see if I can adjust the lighting on that. Yeah, does that make it any easier? Is that better? Okay, there's my bike, but now do you see just to this, there's some dark shadows here. There's some dark shadows coming from the windmill. Well, I spotted them straight away. And that's at the back of the windmill here, which I'm going to use to anchor in where, where it's going to be. So it's going to be quite strong shadows over here. This windmill at Brill is such a great name, isn't it? Brill! It's Brill at Brill! Has been there since the 1680s. When I was young and you were even younger. And uh, being a, an ancient windmill, it's, uh, it, it's been quite a useful highlight for the community. It's um, it's got little steps at the back that you can. Yeah, sorted that, sorted that. Um, it, it's been a, it's been there 1680s. Wow, 340 years it's been there. No, sorry, I was looking for some colours. Ah, oh, that's it. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of this. Buff titanium, some Naples yellow, a little bit of golden yellow. That's nice. And then the tiniest hint of blue. I'll be back in a second, I'm just looking for my palette knife. Tiniest hint of, uh, of turquoise blue. If you mix turquoise blue and yellow together, you get green, green, exactly. Why don't you just use green straight out of the tube? Could do. Could do. But then if I mix some colours, it just might be a bit more interesting. Um, I'm not being particular about, about where things are going. I'm just blocking in some colour. 
because I know that uh, this sharpens up as the process continues. Just to begin with, you want to work out where things are likely to go. So there's likely to be a hillside, a big summit of the hill about here. Deep shadow over there. Right, that's quite important. Then, over on this bit here, a little bit of distant hill. Windmills. We don't see them anymore, do we? They're, 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 they're sort of historic bits of ancient technology. Ancient technology. Somebody dreamt up a windmill, didn't they? And said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had this windmill and we'd be able to grind the wheat or whatever, or bake flour, keep the whole village fed. I think that's just lovely, <coughs> that bit of business about technology. Technology dates, of course. We see that very, very well with with our phones, you know. I've had that phone for two years now. It's old-fashioned. They do say, don't they, that the computing technology that they use to put man on the moon, well, there's, there's more power in your PC from 10, 15 years ago than there is power to put man on the moon. Wow. So technology dates. So this windmill has dated. It's amazing that it lasted 340, 50 years. It was being used right up until about 100 years ago. Now it's open as a tourist attraction uh, after Easter. Today's the date of the very first Easter. Yours. But I don't think very much is going to be open around Easter time, do you? Probably not. Okay. I'm going to look at having this around about like that. I'll just... Use a soft bit of colour here. Uh, Van Dyke Brown I want to use here. I put it down. Where did I put that colour? Van Dyke Brown. Do you ever do this? Do you ever put things really obviously and then you can't see them immediately? I do that all the time can't see stuff. Where did I put whatever it was I was looking for? I do that, you know, when I go upstairs and I've forgotten something. What did I come upstairs for? I have no idea. So you go down the stairs to come back up the stairs. <laughs> see if you can remember what it was that you were coming up for. So little bit of blocking in where I think this windmill is going to be. Slightly more back heavy than it is top heavy. Actually, it's, it's taller than that. And that's why there's a strong shadow here. Uh, that coming down at the back is going to be the, the steps that you go up and then there'll be a set of sail or something like that. That's roughly where the sails are going to fit. It's quite nice with that. Burnt Sienna background, doesn't it? Now, the view out over the hills, over the uh, over the landscape, is towards 
the Cotswolds. So if you can see over towards the Cotswolds, paint them in. A little bit of cobalt turquoise and cobalt violet. This is going to give me the horizon here. Like a, about there, about there. Beckley mast goes over there, and there's a nice bit of turquoise here. Where's it going? Where's that colour that I really like the look of? Cobalt green light. That doesn't look very green, does it? Looks quite blue to me. It's got a really nice turquoise texture about it. Another one of my favourite colours. Put turquoise in with the purple. And it's really nice. It's going to come in here. Right, let's get a bit more of this sky done in here now. Right, okay. Mix up some colours. So I was thinking today about Richard the Lionheart. I talk about him in my book, Utterly Brilliant, My Life's Journey. Richard the Lionheart is one of my historical heroes. A bloke who reached his potential and then some. Historians have a little bit of an issue with him because as King of England, they say, why didn't he spend more time in England? In his 10 year reign, he only spent six months in England. It's true. He didn't need to. He didn't need to spend time in England because England worked. He was in many ways a uh, uh, a European monarch with an empire which stretched from Hadrian's Wall to the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, in March 1199, 25th of March, today, he was besieging a castle in near, near Limoges, which is south central France. It's a castle called Chalou Chabrol. I've been there. You'll look it up in a minute. Chalou Chabrol. It's a tiny little castle. It's got a couple of towers. And it was held by four knights and couple of others who said okay we'll give you a hand we'll help out and one of those who said I'll give you a hand I'll help out a bit was called Pierre Bassin I like the fact that 800 years later 800 years later we know the name of Richard the Lionheart's assailant wow Will our names be remembered in 800 years' time? No, our names won't be remembered tomorrow. But this one is remembered because he was the man with a pan. He was seen uh, often on the ramparts of the tower with a frying pan. Honestly, a, a frying pan, batting away the uh, the shots from down below, from Richard's besieging army. Richard was a man who liked battles. And the bloke who owned this particular castle was being a bit of a pain. Wasn't paying his rents 
wasn't doing what you're supposed to do. So Richard turned up to teach him a lesson. And uh, the siege had been going for a day or two. And it was, you know, not particularly energetic siege. Uh, the army would fire their bows and arrows, their long bows. And Pierre Bassin up there would bat away with his frying pan anything that came his way. And uh, Richard turned up and said, What's taking this time? Get on with it. They said, Oh, okay. Well, my lord, there's a fella up on the ramparts who's batting away our shots. They haven't got much up there. We've asked them to surrender and they won't. They're giving us a bit of grief. Oh, come on, let's get on with it. So after tea, or maybe you had a cup of tea and a piece of ginger loaf or something, Richard stepped out of his tent to go and have a look at the ramparts and say, let's see if we can finish this off nice and straightforwardly. And lo and behold, when he did, somebody saw up on the ramparts Pierre Bassin with his with his frying pan. Hey! There he is! Right, Pierre. Show us what you can do. Somebody fired an arrow. And of course he just goes, pang! And batted it away. Jolly good shot. Well done. Show us what you can do then, said Richard. He's about 150 metres away. Just down below. So Pierre, he's a youngster, what, probably about 16, 17 years old, gets his crossbow and fires. I don't think for one moment that Pierre Vassin was anything other than dead lucky. And Richard the Lionheart was anything other than dead unlucky. Because from 150 metres, he got him. Right there in the collarbone. And Richard wasn't wearing any armour. Why are you wearing armour? Hey, he just stepped out of his tent, doesn't he? He's just had his little bit of afternoon tea. Wasn't expecting to be doing anything more than just plotting what they were going to do tomorrow. So, he doesn't want to make a big fuss of this. Goes back to his tent, calls the surgeon. Gives a hand here. I've got this crossbow bolt sticking out of my, out of my uh, collarbone. And of course, this is a, after, after work, so the, the surgeon had a couple of drinks. I'm dealing with the king. And he makes a hash out of getting the bolt out of Richard's collarbone. Do you want the gruesome details? Oh yeah. It snaps off. He leaves the bolt inside there. Better get it out, says Richard. So they work through the night. By candlelight. Can you imagine how dirty the equipment was? There's none of this washing your hands for 20 seconds stuff going on. And he makes a great big dig around in here and it's not a very good, very pretty sight. It's a really um, deeply unpleasant sight and Richard can smell things aren't right. The onset of gangrene. And he gets poorlier and poorlier over the next 10 days. He sends a message for his mum, Eleanor of Aquitaine, who's 120, 120 miles away at Pontebra. 120 miles, four days. She dashes to his bedside. 
and he gets sicker and sicker and he calls for Pierre Bassan and he says flag a truce come and tell me why'd you do that well you fired at uh, fired and killed my dad and my brother I forgive you says Richard and gives him a hundred shillings and says your life will be spared thank you says Pierre and goes back there's not much battling going on for the next 10 days as they're waiting to see what's going to happen to Richard and lo and behold he expires early April 1199 and the throne passes to King John yeah that's the one bad King John bit of a scumbag wasn't he Pierre Bassin you know that promise? Your life will be spared? Didn't last. You bloke in charge has him executed. You can still go to Chalou Chabrol and you can see the spot where uh, Richard was, where he inspected the troops. You can see where his part of him is buried. Most of them is buried at Fontebra, 120 miles away, uh, across the Charente. But it's a hauntingly evocative scene, this, uh, that makes me go, wow. And all that happened 821 years ago today. Right, while I've been talking to you, I have been automatically blocking in where things are going to go. And you can see the shape and you can see some of the haze that has gone into the sky here. There's a little bit of definition, but not much, of where the landscape's going to go. You've got this strong light and shade going on here put a bit more darkness down the front I think to bring this forward this is this is uh, not certain what this is going to be yet or how detailed this is going to be but it just gives you a little idea of what where things are going to go there's a little space here and that's because in my image Where's it gone? Hang on. Yeah, in my image, um, there's a house behind my bike. So I'm going to block in that house. There's also, yeah, there's the bike got to go in. So the bike's going to come into here and that house. Right, let's block that housing with a little bit of well it, it is actually burnt sienna but I've got burnt sienna on there already so I t you know what I'll do I'll use a bit of the cobalt turquoise I'll use a bit of that I'll mix it with some pink which will give me a hint of something or other this is my building it's going to come in like this there's a chimney at one end chimney at the other right ah oh, that's it yeah now I knew there was something I would missed which is a bit of light there a bit of light on that okay I'm going to take a little look at this now. What I do is now I'm going to stand up and look at it from a distance. Okay. That just tells me where things are and how they should be. 
that's sort of what I'm seeing when I, I, I look away from a distance. You see how, how I blocked it in. So I haven't drawn it as such. I've, I mean, I have drawn it, but I've drawn it with colour. I've just used the light and shade. I've let the light and shade make the difference as to where things are going to go. I'm just tightening up the bolts behind here. I like this easel here. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, thank you. You'd watch if this was on the telly. Well, it is on the telly, isn't it? It's on your on your Facebook. Uh, so this would take some time. One of the things I'll, I'll make sure with this is that I give it uh, time and I look at it again to think how's this going to work now that sail is quite tall but i've got to work this out because the height of that sail has got to match the height below oh right so that's your that's your top spot there you can't go higher than that though you think you can um and that was the image in 94. interestingly um it didn't have no, it didn't have steps leading up to it. You can you can go up the steps now to get in. Uh, and as I say, they open this, give you this wonderful view right out across Oxfordshire and, uh, and Buckinghamshire. Now, I could have done this on site, but it would be difficult because if it's cold, you know, you're all rugged up and have you got enough colours? And this is where the convenience of having uh, having a studio, and there's really no excuse, no excuse at all now, because now we have, um, now we all have cameras. All have cameras on our phones. Oh, something weird happened yesterday on my phone. Has this ever happened to you? I, I put the, the camera in, uh, on and I went to put it into uh, selfie mode. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did. Oh, hang on. Switch camera modes. Enable. Allow. Okay. Right, so... That's my phone in normal mode. Now I want to put it into selfie mode, so I'm going to press that button down there. And it just goes off. It just closes the app. Oh, great. Well, you can't phone uh, the, the phone companies right now because they're all in lockdown and nobody's there and they say, oh, you know, buy a new phone. Here, you can talk to somebody about buying a new phone. I tried this morning, I thought, there must be a help desk somewhere that I could talk to, but nah, there isn't, so. I, I did that usual thing of looking it up on Google, and it said, clear the cache, so I cleared the cache. Right, delete the data, deleted the data. Turn it on and off, okay, I turned it off and on, and nothing happened, so. Um, if anybody's got any wonderful suggestions, I happen to be on Android. Oh, I like that, this dark shadow down here. Now then, that bike, let me have a little look over here just a second. Ah, oh, right, so that's where the bike's going to go. Okay. Now, uh, one of the important things to remember about painting in a, a thing is you paint what you see, not what you know. And I'll just I'll put it in here. And that watercolour. No, I didn't. 
I, I drew it, that's right, I drew it in my sketchbook. Uh, yeah. So in my sketchbook, I, I drew where uh, uh, how it how it looked. Right. Lock it in what you think it's going to do, and this will tell me if it's going to work. Now tell me what are you up to this afternoon. I know you're watching this, but presumably you're doing something else at the same time. I'm just a bit of entertainment to keep you company while you're doing whatever else it is you're supposed to be doing. What are you doing today? Put a little message on here and let me have a little look. Right, so... And you see, there's the bike. Let me bring it around a bit. Got the idea? Actually, the bike looks quite small. Hang on one second. Take a step across my studio and have a little look. <coughs> yeah, it might have to be a bit bigger. Just might have to be a smidget bigger just because uh, otherwise it looks like you know I'm, I'm riding a tiny tiny bike and uh, we want the bike to have some degree of scale it's just just blocked in These deep shadows here, by the way, are, are the side of this hill. This, this mound here drops away uh, on this side into a valley which did have originally um, habitation because when you're up at Brill, you look down there, you can see where there used to be lumps and bumps of people's homes and I guess plague, black death, coronavirus cleared away all those homes and there's nothing there now just uh, lumps and bumps of a field I'm feeling quite good with this now we've got another 10 minutes or so I think and then I think I'll wrap that up for the day but what have you said down here glad you enjoying the painting watching from France thanks Sharon Sharon Duvall so you'll be able to visit the uh, places I was talking about there, you know, uh, Chalou Chabrol, over near Limoges. I was there last year as a guest of the owner. Let's have a little look at it. I tried to do it all up. To be honest, it's probably a bit beyond them, really, because it's quite a lot of work involved in all of that. I have a feeling they invited me over to get me to buy it. <laughs> so what would I do with the castle? I got Timmy Towers, I'm quite happy here. Right. Remember what I said before, which is sky is always darker at the top. Now, interesting, uh, I'm standing up here now, and the reason for that, this is usually my preferred way of painting. I find the energy I get from standing to paint gives me much more creativity. I find this a lot more fun. I prefer standing. I, I, think, uh, I think it delivers more. So, this, what I'll do with this is I'll leave it to dry, which will take several days, and then I will uh, investigate it again and look at it and think, right, what's the next thing? Now, interestingly, you'll notice that the sails are dark, but we expect the sails on a windmill to be 
uh, light because that's they always are they're always white sails but we're looking at them in silhouette here we're looking at the silhouette of the windmill and its sails and that's why they're dark There's a little bit of light at the back there. Yeah, she's got some turquoise in it. There's those steps. They're going to come down there. That's going to go to there. That's going to have that in. Yeah, this is going to work. So build up your image, Mallet, in light and shade. It doesn't need to be finished all in one go. Don't look to do things all in one go look to block them in look to create shapes textures and it will work need a bit of highlight just above that Yes. Feeling good? There is always inspiration right outside your door. When you go out for your little bit of exercise this evening, I'm going to make a suggestion that you head out around about the 4.35 o'clock if you can. You know, if you're able to go and do your uh, little bit of exercise um, and get as far as the park or something, just have a look um, to the west and you'll see the richness of the colours. And then look to the east. Look to the east as the sun goes down. We, d we don't new usually do this. We usually look west. But look to the east and you'll see the sky blushing. My favourite Australian Impressionist artist, uh, Arthur Streeton, talks about looking the wrong way to the east at sundown and the sky blushes. I like that. I, I like that sort of feeling of, of modesty, if you like, about the glories of westward sunset and the flooding light. You'll see that the hedgerows are full of uh, white blossom from the blackthorn at the moment. The magnolias are out, the daffodils, the celandines, the first bits of blossom on the fruit trees are starting to uh, to bud. hope they don't bud too much because we're going to have a, a chilly weekend apparently and the weather forecast is for quite, um, quite a chilly weekend with a, a north wind coming down from the Arctic which is going to slow the rest of uh, spring until we get it back, uh, until we get a decent week next week. Anyway, it just reminds me all the time when I'm doing these things and I'm looking at this stuff, it sees the day. This is the day. Be rooted in the moment. And that moment on uh, um, Brill Windmill Hill was truly inspirational on, uh, on Sunday. It's one of those where you, you go out and you go, hmm, I wonder if we'll be able to do this quite as much in the next few weeks. And as we know, we have the famous lockdown and so we're at home. That's all right. Fill the time, make sure you do stuff. Where's the trees gone? Man, you paint fast. <laughs> well, all I'm doing is painting... Uh, what you see. So started with that um, nice brown burnt sienna and as you can see it's still there. The bits of burnt sienna are still there and what that does is it enriches the colours that are there. So the blue looks bluer because it's got the burnt sienna behind it. The green looks greener. These are, uh, are uh, complementary colours. They add a bit of zinc. And your eye does the work. So we'll come back to this. 
have a little look at this on another occasion. Is that a deal? And we'll see how Mallet develops this. I'm not in a rush. This is not about let's get the painting finished. This is about let's get the painting right. You'll notice that I, often when I'm painting I, I seem to scrub at the canvas with these brushes. That's what I'm using. That size, it's not much is it? A flat shader. Quarter of an inch? Yeah, not much at all. And if anybody's got any ideas how I can get this so that when you watch it, it's the right way round and it looks like I'm painting with my right hand rather than with my left. You know, let me know, because um, I'll be interested to see how how that happens. Right. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jules. Did I, Mark? You, Mark's asked me a question. Did I finish yesterday's painting? No, I haven't finished yesterday. No. Uh, yeah, I know what I was going to show you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. That's what I was painting yesterday. Remember? Well, I've been looking at this and I've got some ideas of what I'm going to do next to this painting. Because every painting needs to be worked at and you need to think about them. You absorb them, you go away, you think about it, you look at it, you go, hmm, what more could I do? There'll be some suggestions coming in, but uh, please send me your, uh, your notes on this and uh, if this has been worthwhile. I mean, if it hasn't been, you know, I, I don't mind. It, it's there. Uh, and if it was, uh, if I've just gone on too long, whatever. But thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Stay safe and happy and enjoy that sunshine. It's an absolutely startlingly beautiful day. Who knows, I may even take the watercolours out into the garden. Do a little sketch or two and see what I've done. If I do, I'll bring it back and show you. And we'll try and work out how to get this image the right way round. We'll try and work out how to fix my phone so that when I go to selfie mode on the camera, it doesn't go, oh, OK, I'm not going to bother anymore. <laughs> Somebody will have an idea. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. This is Timmy saying, ta-da, over and out.